Well, how's this? In the man cave tonight, such is the news out of Victoria that he wanted to be here, so I didn't talk over him and didn't cut off his microphone. He's none other than Stephen Conroy. Welcome to the man cave. Uh, James Morrow is here. Matt Canavan doing it from home in Rocky right now. So... Danny Landers, greatest Victorian Premier ever, greatest Labor in leader. Of, in terms of his stature within the Labor Party, the Labor movement, he will go down as one of the greats. I mean, Braxy won three, he's won three, <laughs> and there aren't many you get to say that. What about in terms of the public? I mean, the public passed a judgment. They rehired they, him at the end did. of the last uh, year. And they didn't just pass a judgment. They overwhelmingly endorsed him. They gave him a pay rise. They gave him, a, they gave him an increase. I mean, a third-term government getting... Winning seats off the opposition and getting an increased majority is an extraordinary electoral result. But to the people who are kicking the television uh, right now, uh, uh, that, that, that basically, essentially, despite all the noise, despite all the, the scandal, despite all of the disgrace, there's not even a chink in his armour, let alone, uh, you know, a serious graze. No, mm. but nobody the really landed politicians there. politicians go when, when they, they're on top. Yeah. And he's gone out on top. Now, so again, you've got to give him credit. He's, he, he's probably tired of it. Increasingly in Victoria, there's a sense of uh, mood for change, and he's got out ahead of it. Well, again, James, I, I ain't polishing this bloke's suit of armour, but I'm just saying is, is that if you've won three in a row, if you've won three in a row, if you've found a way to go around any and everyone who'll criticise you, if you've been able to completely run the show, that you, that even you know uh, mathematical chances yeah, well, of challenge I mean, you blow it away. Sure. I'm just saying he got away with it. And look, Paul, I mean, which look, is terrible. Great, great achievements there by this guy. I mean, you know, he hired away all the journalists so they would all be in his communications uh, team. Tell you know, he point. managed to achieve uh, the highest deaths of any jurisdiction uh, in Australia during COVID. He managed to achieve uh, some of the longest lockdowns in the entire world. I'm telling you, you look at the whole board, it's he's plenty managed to, He's managed to leave Victoria with crippled uh, public debt. Uh, here, I brought some tissue out for PR guy 17 <laughs> and all of the Twitter stands who are out there uh, having a big old sook that their dear leader is gone. Um, look, I got to say, you know, I mean, yeah, if that's a, if that's achievement, it's really quite remarkable because I was in Melbourne the other week and it's looking pretty shabby these days, I'm afraid. And I say this as somebody who I've always liked that city, but it's looking very shabby. And with the Commonwealth Games gone, you know, I suspect that's a, long, a lot of the reason why so many of those regional but, seats voted for him on that promise. But again, don't you love the idea? The bloke who screws the health system in Western Australia, he's the one who ends up being uh, the Premier. <laughs> the one who uh, was the Minister for the Games that never turned up is going to be the Premier after this. But, Matt, what about on the, on the step back here, right? Now, again, easy for us to red meat this and just scream and rant and rave and all the rest of it. It'll be fun for lots of people. But what about my contention here where the thing that he proved was there is an electorate that does not care what things cost and he was able to create this triangle of dependency that meant he had very little resistance and the resistance that he got was so numerically insignificant to what he had put together that he was able to roll over the top of them, which is exactly the Palaszczuk play, by the way. Well, look, uh, uh, Paul. There's no doubt that, that Dan Andrews was a was a was a very slick politician. Uh, he's a good communicator, and uh, he he sort of mastered the initial ages of, of social media, especially Facebook, and was successful at that. I mean, there's a difference between being a good politician and a good statesman. And I don't think Dan Andrews will go down as a, in history as a good statesman. I mean, Malcolm Fraser won three elections as well, and. No one really holds him up as some historic prime minister. <laughs> Political success does not does not equate to to historical legacy. And I, I should say, I meant to say, I'm just glad that Stephen's brought himself away, dragged himself away from the Victoria Rights celebrations tonight. <laughs> and just gone. Thank you, Stephen, uh, for being with us. Uh, it's very kind of you. Um, well, he knows there's and, no chance and, and, of trying look, to I fit up another candidate. That has been fucking not come to the man. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. That's right. I think that's the reality. Put in one. They need uh... you, Stephen. They need. They need you. They need your number counting. Um, but 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 just just another thing that hasn't come up yet. Of course, Daniels will be remembered long for his the longest lockdown in the world. But just keep in mind the two events that have bookended his premiership. When he got in, he spent a, about a billion dollars of taxpayers' money just to not build a tunnel. Uh, mm. uh, in Melbourne, and, and at the end, he, s he spent three hundred eighty million dollars not having a Commonwealth Games that, that he had he had promised. And uh, on top of all that, then you've had debt more than quadruple in Victoria, and unfortunately, the legacy of, Vic of Dan Andrews will go on for many years for Victorians because they'll be paying much higher taxes 
the fund the interest on that debt that Dan Andrews accumulated and didn't, doesn't have a lot to show for it. Now, I do want to get to other stuff, so we're not going to go all down all the time. But, Stephen, I did want to put this point to you, which is that Andrews is one of the small club of people who get the pension for life because they were in the pre-system than the one that was changed, of right. course, in 2004. Does that make it easier for a politician to go because the financial consequences yeah. are Look, non-existent? Uh, I mean, this, but is for most where, now, yeah, this is one of the arguments where... This one of the arguments where... You know, the public absolutely hate the politicians' superannuation scheme. I've always been willing to say it works because it allows... It stops people hanging around forever. Yes. Uh, and there is a benefit to, to people not just saying, this is the only thing I've got in my life. I'm going to manage the internals of the, of the party. Either party, doesn't matter. I'm going to manage them... Uh, so that I don't ever get challenged, I can still be here. And the, the parties then ossify. Mm. Mm. Uh, so the, the pension system had two advantages. One, that it ensured that people could be moved on without them wanting to cling for dear life. Not that they didn't fight, but it, it made it simpler. And the second is, it also took away some element of the corruption. Uh, we've had almost no corruption in federal politics and... Some isolated examples, unfortunate ones at state level, but in general, the Australian politics has not been corrupt. And I would defend the pension system as being for that. You, you weren't, didn't have an eye on your next career mm. because you had some form of pension going forward. Not a popular view. Yeah, and, but and, I, and but, I mean, look, we all know that we lose, you lose a dinner party conversation, everyone. But but to this point, I mean, you saw it with things like, like say, a Matt Keane, right, in a New South Wales yeah. government, where, because there is, there is no after, the entire time in office is spent trying to fit a CV for when you go out to the market, as opposed to having a financial plan post. Well, I mean, I, look, I'm actually going to kind of agree with Stephen here on this. I actually think that, um, and again, it's a controversial dinner party style, where I think we should pay our politicians more. We should give them a big pension on one condition that when they're out of office, they go, no, we are near Correct. public that's life. That's and that's truth. that, I think, has to be the case. Singapore, actually, we does silence. this no really more tweeting, well. No more speeches, <laughs> yeah. no more Just ghosting. Go away. You're yeah. gone, especially Cincinnati's for Cincinnati's to his plough. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. 